Hey cats, it's your midsole man Ed Budd back once again. Today with a sneak peek on some new running shoes. One of my classic yay or nay videos for you. I'm speculating on these, whether I'm gonna pick them up for review or not in the future. It might be that some other shoe tuber is gonna do them more justice on review. There's a whole bunch of stuff today, let's get to it. Hey people, it's been light years since my last video. Feeling a little bit better now, possibly food poisoning or some sort of stomach bug or something, but it certainly hit me for six. Such is the danger when you have a small kid, they bring back sort of weird illnesses that you just have no sort of protection against whatsoever. On the crackers and water for a bit, but don't worry, I'm back. And my resolve has never been stronger. More power. Seriously though, thanks for all the kind messages. Lots of people checking in that I'm okay. I'm still here, I'm still breathing. Before we get into the yay or nay people, make sure you give this video a thumbs up like. It really does help the channel to continue to grow. You know it makes sense. Yay or nay, got four shoes for you today. Let's get straight into it. First one up is their soon to release Nike Ultra Fly. Now this shoe's been spotted and been knocking around for almost years I think now. It's finally set to arrive in the UK in July and I'm not actually that excited about it to be honest. Nike seemingly dumping the original version to swap out the poor quality rubber featured on all their other trail shoes which are about as grippy as Mr. Trout at Troutland covered in oil. I've yet to use a Nike trail shoe that's got substantially good grip or better grip than some of the other sort of more trail orientated makers. And the other thing about this shoe that kind of perplexes me a bit is that it's being very much aimed at ultra marathons. So that's like a really big section of the running community. Or is it? I did manage to find a survey out there that suggests that less than 1% of Americans have run a marathon. So I wonder what percentage of people have run an ultra marathon. It's got to be less than that, surely. The other thing that's putting me off the ultra fly is the fact it's 300 grams for a US 10. Now you might say that's actually quite reasonable for a trail shoe. Well, but is this really a trail shoe? The up here is Vapor Weave, which we saw in the original Vaporfly Next Percent. That's about as protective as a layer of cling film around your foot as you run through Lego. In other words, ace for road use, but I don't quite understand its usage here for protecting the foot from the various dangers and hazards on ultra trail events that you're gonna find, aren't you? They're gonna be numerous. What about the snakes? What about raccoons and squirrels and the ferrets, hey? What about them? I just don't quite understand where that's coming in. I mean, that's probably gonna be about 320, 330 grams or something for my size, so it just makes it the same as the others. And there's other trail shoes that now have P-backs in the midsole as well, and that have some sort of wrap around that P-backs material to protect it as well. So it's nothing new. Other trail shoes have got Vibram outsole as well and they're not 230 quid plus they're more suited for protecting your foot in terms of the upper so i'm not really sure what separates this shoe from being a road shoe i just don't quite see it you could graft on some vibram outsole to your vapor fly couldn't you i know the kev next percent burton's done that kev i hope you're doing okay buddy i know you're injured i hope you're healing up make sure you eat lots of pizza I just think the Ultrafly is going to appeal to a very niche section of runners. I don't see it being a shoe that sort of crosses over to the masses whatsoever, especially at the price. Well, 230 quid. It's only slightly cheaper than the Vaporfly. Many other shoe tubers will probably receive this shoe early and they're probably more well versed to tell you about its intricacies than I am. So it's a nay on the Ultrafly for me. It's just too rich a product. Shoe 2. Brooks have a fourth version of their Hyperion Elite shoe. This time it appears to feature a new type of foam though in the midsole, which has caught my attention. It's a second version of their DNA Flash formula. It appears to offer more cushion along the lines of their responsive and stable nitrogen infused foams. Now there's a special plate in this one that I was quite intrigued by. Changes in size and shape depending on the sizing of the shoe. Now I always thought that was a given really in terms of plates and structures within the midsole of shoes. Apparently not though, Brooks have stated it does actually change depending on the size. It's more like a frame I suppose. You can see they've tried to weight relieve and take out as much of the material as possible. I guess it's more like a halfway point between the Adidas energy rods and a standard flat plate I suppose. It will no doubt reduce the weight, 
and make the shoe a little bit more flexible, though still providing some level of rigidity there. Perhaps making it a slightly more versatile shoe across the different race distances. It does look like the top layer of cushion here perhaps could be that new formula they're talking about. And then the older version perhaps in the heel. It's certainly a very breathable upper by all accounts. It's not all that dissimilar to the Endorphin Pro 3 or the Vaporfly 3 models. Lots of holes. Also in the outsole too, keeping things to the minimum once again there, taking out lots of that rubber to relieve a little bit of that exposed midsole. Brooks have always been pretty good at keeping their race shoes pretty low in weight. I do recall that Hyperion Elite 2 was somewhere around 240 grams, and apparently here it's about 221 in the sample size, so it's still going to be pretty low. I get loads of requests to try out Brooks shoes. They may not be the most fashionable, perhaps, amongst some of the uh, influencer community, I suppose, but I see bucket loads of people wearing Brooks shoes in the local area, at local races, so they are very much in the mind's eye of those runners, and I want to try and give reviews to people that people want to watch and that they might be interested by. That Ghost 15 review that I did a while back, loads of people are interested in that. Got loads and loads of comments about it. I didn't bother to try out the Hyperion Elite 3, but the 4's got a few extra things going on here that makes it a little bit more interesting. It's going to be a yay on the Hyperion Elite 4. When it does drop, I think it's sort of like a coming soon in the US. We'll just have to wait and see. Shoe 3. This one's a real stinker. I couldn't help but include it. It's a nay, I'll tell you that straight off the bat. Check this out, the Adidas Switch Forward. Well, it's a max cushion shoe, this one. 44 millimeters of stack height and apparently 34 millimeters in the forefoot. Just imagine, just imagine what it's going to be in my size. So this is the Switch Forward from Adidas. It must be a mistake, that weight figure, I hope. We've got an EVA midsole, so yeah, maybe that's taking up some of the actual weight. There's also a TPU plate in here as well. I'm not entirely sure why. What appears to be a thicker upper on top of all of that, reminiscent of that Adi Star release that we had a couple of years back. Now, the first thing I thought of when I saw this shoe was that it was an on shoe, you know, on running, but it's not, but I bet that on are onto them. Yeah. So it's got some huge holes there underfoot. I understand what they're trying to do there, sort of like collapsible sort of pods or something. It's kind of like a frame, I suppose, but that's just going to get full up with debris and rocks and stones in no time. This has got to be a casual shoe. I can't believe that this is a running shoe. It must be like a fashion orientated model. I can't imagine anybody rocking up to this one for proper running, like a race or anything. I mean, unless you enjoy picking rocks out of your shoes for half of the day. Older EVA in this format just seems completely at odds with the buying public. You know, heaven knows who they're aiming at here. Who have they tested this with? Have they tested it at all? Is it like a AI generated idea and they're just sort of putting stuff out there? Some of the shoes at the moment that have been released, there's some really bizarre stuff. You do wonder whether it is some sort of AI that's firing out these ideas and they produce a few thousand just to see what happens. I really hope that's the case anyway. Please bring back some proper designers if that is the case. I mean, it's 120 quid, so it's not going to totally break the bank, but there's a hundred other shoes out there that are probably better than this. So it's a massive nay for the switch forward from Adidas. No chance. Okay, last one up today is shoe four. I'm gonna revisit the Nike React X Infinity Run 4. I did speculatively give this one a yay when I looked at it a couple of weeks back, though I've seen a few sneak peeks of this shoe now and it doesn't really look like something that I'm interested in at all actually to review, mainly down to the fact that Nike have made this shoe really, really heavy. I think it's about 345 grams. That's in a UK nine. Big thanks to the run testers for actually putting up the weight of the shoe when they received it. There's no way I'm going near this one with a barge pole. It seems incredibly heavy in my size. Uh, UK 11, that's gonna be 360, maybe 365. We're getting up towards ultra boost sort of territory. That's madness. And I'm not talking about the new light boost. I'm talking about the original ultra boost. I've no need for such a shoe in my rotation. And I don't really think many of you guys do either. Can't really see the point of it. Maybe beginners, people keep saying that. They might be able to get something out of the shoe. 
think it's a whole bunch of shoes from Asics that are probably a little better for that. If you want something with gallons of cushion there that's really sort of resilient yet still forgiving, I mean, like the Nimbus 25's got that covered. And this shoe's not all that far off of the Nimbus price now. Maybe even a bit higher, actually, at retail. Does this offer anything else that the Invincible Run 3 doesn't cover? I mean, that's very cushioned, incredibly squashy and forgiving on foot. So I'm sorry to disappoint you if you were hoping I was going to pick this one up. It's a nay, unfortunately, now. I shan't be stepping into the Infinity Run, mainly because the... Earth Credit Wallet isn't infinite. It does run out at some point. You seem to need an infinite wallet to fund some of those Nike purchases these days. Hopefully there'll be another shoe that has React X in it to see if that's any better. I have every right obviously to change my mind on yay or nays and this one I think would be a bit of a mistake to pick up. I think there's other shoes out there that people want to see me review rather than this one. What do you make of this current bunch people? Let me know your thoughts and opinions on these four down in the comments. Quick musical interlude for you. So whilst I was laying in bed for like four or five days or whatever it was, bored out of my mind, I was listening to loads and loads of music. One of my favourite tracks from the early 70s has got to be the Johnny Rivers version of Sea Cruise. You can check this one out on a cool music YouTube channel called Music Laden. I shall place a link up to that in the description of this video. It's absolute gold, this version. Johnny Rivers playing a, Johnny Rivers is playing a really nice sort of darker toned colour of a uh, Gibson 335 here with a fantastic band behind him. Awesome drummer. The key keyboard or piano player here is absolutely fantastic. I think he was perhaps one of the wrecking crew that used to play on all the early sort of Motown tracks and River's voice sounds absolutely incredible. I'm amazed still to this day that people don't know about Johnny Rivers as much as they could. There's so much great music out there. I don't think he played all that much here in the UK. Might have been down to some sort of promoter disagreement or something but he seems to be a lot bigger over in the US. But this video is absolutely stellar and I think it may be from like a German channel or something, but the audio quality is so good you can pick out every instrument within the performance. There's loads of energy there and Johnny Rivers, as per usual, being the sort of cover master, produces a brilliant version. Probably the best version of Sea Cruise that there is out there. So if you like your rock and roll, you know where to go. Check the link in the description for this one for the Music Laden YouTube channel, Johnny Rivers with Sea Cruise. Good to be back to it with a yay or nay for today. I was particularly scathing, I think, over a couple of those shoes, taking out the frustration of being in bed for too long. Thanks for tuning in, people. Hit that subscribe button and click the bell for notifications too. Give this video a thumbs up like, it really helps out. My name's Ed Budd and I'll be seeing you.